Good afternoon, everyone. This is Gavaskar Reed from the New York City Department of Education. This is our uh, Engineering and Arch Architecture Commission meeting for the spring semester. I'm going to ask that if you are unmuted, that you would mute yourself at this time because I sometimes hear feedback. I'm really, really glad to see you all here today. Uh, this is one of our gatherings that we have throughout the school year so that we keep the partnerships going between our New York City public school system and the various partners represented here today who are part of the public sector, the private sector, the nonprofit sector, the unions, and everybody in between. Uh, I am the industry engagement manager. I lead this commission. We have two co-chairs for this commission. We have Dr. Michael Horidniciano, who I like to call the Romanian sensation. He's a professor and chair of the Institute of Construction Innovation, Civil and Urban Engineering Department at New York University's Tandon School of Engineering. Uh, he is not going to be joining us for this particular meeting because he had uh, some very, very major surgeries. So he's at home recovering. So just keep him in your thoughts at this time. Uh, but we also have with us the wonderful Miss Mindy No, who is the principal of Perkins Eastman. She's been co-chair of this commission for the past couple of years now. And what I really like about Mindy is that at any point, if there are certain uh, initiatives or certain activities that we need to get done, where it involves engaging our young people or our staff with some professionals in the industry, uh, I can call on her. And I know that she... Uh, was able to do a nice uh, workplace tour with some of our students from one of our urban assembly schools earlier this year. Um, earlier this year, so thank you for that, Mindy. For those of you that are not familiar with these meetings, we have these commission meetings throughout the school year so that we can keep each other up to date with industry trends, with various opportunities for collaboration. We have a portfolio of about 130 career and technical education high schools or high schools that have CTE programs throughout the five boroughs of New York City. And we do everything from automotive to the construction trades, to healthcare, to business, to culinary, to IT, and a whole bunch of different uh, career oriented subjects. Where this commission is concerned, we try to bring together all of our high schools that have CTE programs in architecture, design, robotics, civil engineering, mechanical engineering, uh, mechanical drafting, and other subjects that relate to STEM. In our audience, we have a number of different uh, participants who are considered partners of the work that we do. So if you are somebody that wants to build solid relationships with our high schools, this is the place to be. We use these meetings to either review curriculum or we share internship opportunities, we share employment opportunities, we share upcoming events, we share uh, various sorts of initiatives where we can have a mutually beneficial relationship with each other. Uh, these meetings are recorded and all of the resources, flyers, materials, slides, they are all accessible to everyone on this call. We have a public folder on our Google Drive. If you simply go to bit.ly slash industry engagement folder, you'll see all meeting notes, attendance, slides, flyers, and all sorts of resources, not only from this meeting, but all meetings that we've had in the past and for all commissions representing all of our CTE sectors. For our agenda today, we have a jam-packed list of some valuable partners we're gonna be presenting on some resources that those of us in the audience can tap into. Uh, I'm gonna be turning it over to Mindy No in a few minutes. And I want us to know that uh, we have Tony Reed here from Joint Cadets. Uh, he's somebody that uh, we've been talking uh, together for a while and, and I know that he's been involved in a lot of our various career days and I see that he was in Texas the other day. This man is nationally known, internationally known, so I'm glad that he's a part of our commission today. Uh, Carolyn Horton, she's from IFMA, the International Facilities Management Association. Unfortunately, her son uh, just got sick, so she had to uh, bow out of being a part of our agenda today. But just to let you know, for our schools that are on the line, if there's any interest in facilities management, we do have a wonderful team there at IFMA that's willing to engage your kids and your staff either virtually or in person. Uh, 
that's a great opportunity for, for you to learn more about that career pathway. So please just hit me up if you need Caroline and her team at IFMA to be involved in things happening at your school. We have Dr. Shun Yu from NYIT. Um, as you know, for the engineering schools that are a part of this call, we have an articulation agreement with all of our CTE engineering uh, programs. And Dr. Yu is gonna be talking about a very unique uh, BS in uh, construction engineering program that he has to offer. Next, we have Jun Yang from City Tech. City Tech, we also have an articulation agreement with them for all of our architecture schools that are on this call. She'll be talking about uh, an upcoming summer opportunity with you. Next, it's my pleasure to introduce Stephen Cohen from the famous Brooklyn Cyclones. He has a wonderful event coming up that will be promoting the skilled trades. And every one of us here, we are all about STEM. We're all about the skilled trades. And we're gonna be talking about some opportunities uh, for your young people to uh, tap into uh, towards the latter part of this uh, meeting. Next, he's no stranger to us, Ismail Ocasio. He is now with Rebuilding Together NYC. This is another uh, direct entry program that we have a partnership with. I know many of you may be familiar with construction skills, but they're not the only game in town. We do have other uh, direct entry pipelines available for your young people. If they can't get into construction skills, there are other pathways available into the unions as well as into the private sector. So Ismail is gonna be talking about rebuilding together NYC. And I try to leave a space for us to have any other additional announcements or any other industry updates or any other questions, concerns you wanna raise before we close out this meeting. So I'll leave the meeting um, open after all of our presenters have had a chance to speak their piece. All right, I leave the chat box open uh, I leave the chat box open for everyone so you can feel free to message me and message anybody else in the room that you'd like to network and connect with. If you have any questions or concerns at any time, please raise your hand so that we can acknowledge you. And again, try to keep yourself muted unless you're the one speaking. And again, I really appreciate you coming uh, to this meeting. And I understand that right now I'm an obstacle between you and your holiday for those of you that are from Department of Education. And um, I'm not about that life. I do know some of you celebrate the 420. Not me. I'm not about that stuff. But um, the meeting is not going to be too long. Um, so without further ado, I'll pass it over to Mindy Note. Go for it, Mindy. Hi, thanks, Gav. So um, I'm so excited to see everyone here. Um, and welcome to our presenters here today. You know, as we look towards the new normal, uh, we continue to experience some education challenges, whether it's back to school or back to work. You know, how can we better connect with the industry, latest trends, current practices to better provide exposure to potential careers, whether it's focusing on implementation and the impact to CTE students by following students uh, through their career path, whether it's after high school, and to focus uh, also to the focus of communication collaboration skills. Uh, I know that it's still very important to strengthen our connections between schools and industry partners, and even though we're seeing a lot of market fluctuations here today, this year, and, and moving forward, uh, decisions are being made much more slowly uh, due to market uncertainty, uncertainties, but uh, the need for skilled staff is really high. And I'm hopeful for the coming year to look for opportunities to continue with this collaboration, connecting with each other and encouraging teamwork, you know, problem solving and research skills that are still critical in the success of CTE students and educators and administrators alike. So thank you and welcome everyone. Thank you so much, Mindy. Now, next, we are brothers, not biologically, but in terms of the work that we do. I wanted to introduce commercial pilot, SUS pilot, Tony Reed. He's been in the UAV drone industry for seven years. He received this part 107 UAS certification in 2016. Since then, he's trained and deployed with the American Red Cross, operating in many missions from mapping in Hurricane Harvey to damage assessments in Puerto Rico, Hurricane Maria in 2018. Recently, Mr. Reed deployed to the Grand Bahamas in hurricane relief during 2019. He conducted damage assessments in Dorian 2019, which included inspections of buildings, critical infrastructure, such as bridges, highways, roof inspections, and power lines. Mr. Reed is also co-founder and VP of business development and drone instructor for Drone Cadets, a program which exposes and trains drone technology to youths. 
teaching FAA rules and regulations, repair classes, coding, and drone operations. It is Mr. Reed's fervent goal to expose this technology to all black and brown communities. Mr. Reed has been active in the United States National Guard for 10 years. As a part of the STEM career program, which showcases the many STEM military careers in the National Guard, Mr. Reed has been certified in SUAS thermogra um, thermography, EPA 608 certified, TWIC, and Baziet Offshore Emergency Trained. It's my pleasure to feature Tony Reed. Feel free to unmute, Tony. All right, well, thank you, thank you, thank you all. Thank you all. Very glad to be here. Appreciate uh, one, the time. I know we have yeah, 10 minutes to rock and roll, so I will get right to it. Am I allowed to share or am I good to yes, go? Yes, feel, feel, feel free to share. Well, uh, hello everyone, Tony Reed here. Um, Mr. Reed, uh, G. Reed, I uh, just gave a great, Oh, did I lose them already? Uh, great introduction. So okay. let me get right to it, get straight to business. So exactly. So um, drone cadets, uh, what drones are all about. Um, we're really big into the CT side. Um, work with a lot of different schools right now with uh, Thomas Edison kicking off their program for their Part 107 to get those kids included. But the real kicker is the workforce side is what I'm really, really big about. I work with a lot of different companies that need a lot of different skill sets. So being in high school and even middle school, what we do is to get those uh, get them suited and ready to go. And what's really big right now is T and D work, right? There's a lot of T and D work that needs to be done. Um, that's just one classification we're working with: electric uh, power transmission distribution. And that's where we train uh, a lot of our youth on, so they get one certified in those areas. Um, so they get those types of internships with like Con Ed, uh, Orange and Rockland, those types. Or if they want to deploy with me, where I go to California, Southern Edison and Power. Those are the areas to get them all ready. Um, next would be, you know, um, working, let's, let's get to the next one. Power, the power line inspection side for transmission is huge, right? Um, from 335 kilovolts of what we work on to our residential power. So, you know, and aligning with those, you know, with you guys in engineering side and uh, the building side, you know, power is one of the most important features of all. Uh, we, are, we are gonna start utilizing drones in, in those fashions for security wise, since we already know what's going on in the world. A lot of people said they are very vulnerable states. They wanna start utilizing drones for their power stations. So technology for those for kids to actually protect our infrastructure in case someone does wanna do some harm that's another way your drones are utilized. Um, so as you can see, we got some thermography wise utilization of it. Um, what we're looking for with kids uh, as I go through my courses is, hey, we're looking for any type of anomalies within these areas, right? And these are the types of engineering groups that need these types. And so that, hey, we can be able to use drones effectively. Instead of using the whole 10 crew, uh, we can use two now. Now we just know what we need, what tools we need on that bass so that the drone that the drone pilot got in there now here send that order over to our repairman um you know these are just some quick show shots that we've done by identifying the pole what area you know we do a lot of uh, like we need to literally utilize the geography geography side of it by pinpointing everything in google so that we know all, all of our inspection all of our power lines and that's what we're literally working with to make sure that uh the softwares we use the kids will understand exactly where to go. Um, so that's a big, a big toll. So just quick shots we've done from RGB to transmission wise, the comparisons. Um, next is really big is the hurricane season. We're ramping up big time in Florida, Texas, anywhere that's really neat. And we deploy our students out to where these areas are at. So this is from Hurricane Ian, recently just happened. Uh, this is what they needed for State Farm. And these are the types of shots they need so that, hey, the people on the ground that are making the assessments, which a lot of times they can't get to, these shots literally give them the, the you know, hey, how much are we gonna spend to these people? Because, hey, they need to rebuild commercially and residential side. So the masses are building up very quickly, but the, the need, right is really big but hasn't been afloated as much so you know yes there are really a lot more pies than our unmanned pies than our uh, man pies but it's about the quality of what you're actually presenting to these companies that are making our company stand out because we want these kids to understand that this is what's about this is what the workforce looks like and this is how you get involved and these are the things that i do i'm getting old i need to you know i can't do everything so i need someone to take over what i do be another me or be a better me and they can take this to the masses. Drone technology has only been around for the civilian sector since 2016 to get those types of credentials. So much room for improvement, 
so much they can do. And I just think that, you know, can, you know, literally collaborating, you know, with, with schools and officials to get you guys to really see what the advances are, this would be huge for them. Um, just sun shots from overhead, you know, these, this is damage. This is someone's business that literally, you know, needs to, you know, they, they can't do any work without, you know, just being, you know, they need the money, you guys get it. Understand another thing, drone deliveries, huge. Right now, we're just, oh, I got back from Texas. We signed a partnership with Google Wing and like the masses of what they need on Google Wing is insane. You know, by literally getting communities to understand that drone delivery is a reliable source, right? Um, you know, if they want to combat the climate side of utilizing less vehicles, well, we're using drones to be able to utilize that, right? So we're, we're you know, so many different areas of what you can utilize it with. So delivery wise, then we have pilots that's needed to be utilized, right? Now we need visual observers on the ground to make sure those drones get to the various areas. So there's a lot going on. You know, we're literally doing a lot of tests with these companies so it could be viable and then kids could be sustainable. So, you know, just, just hitting some points. I know I only got like 10 minutes, you know. Another thing we're really is the urban mobility side. It's really big right now with transportation, with uh, VTOL systems. We're talking like the Uber of transportation, but we need to be able to have kids that understand how to, how we're going to manage that traffic, right? From different airspace classifications. How do we do that? How's that created? Well, you know, the FAA has a lot going on right now when it comes to utilizing um, uh, Roblox. They actually have a huge, uh, huge thing going on with them actually managing, build us an airport, or build us a smart city of how we're going to utilize our planes to uh, helicopters to drones in different airspaces. That's going on right now. And utilizing Roblox as ways of getting people and getting these young people into it. The virtual side of it, data acquisition side, the virtual reality for architecture, it's huge. Utilizing the matter ports of 3D managing wise and be able to build those building blocks into the technology is huge. I'm just, you know, I'm just literally just taking various parts of my PowerPoint deck. I've got tons and tons of things that we utilize in our classroom, but we work with so many different companies that need these types of, you know, thinking. So if we get them ready for the workforce in the classroom, so they're ready to take on, you know, it's just, it's just to manage, it's just to imagine the things that they could do if we just expose it to them. That's all I'm about, I'm all about exposure. Um, and then, oh my God, I'm gonna give me some mapping. I'm really big into mapping. That's how we make our bread and butter uh, from Google wise, because hey, what happens with hurricanes is that it just, it, it just blows everything off, right? Like literally take one shot and then after a hurricane happens, what happens to the levels of that? You know, you know, we need to go into excavating wise, right? We need to just so many things construction wise, how are we gonna rebuild this landscape from what nature has done to it and how we're going to make it better or more suitable. So the mapping is a big thing. Drone deploy and us work together hand in hand to help that out because that's what would happen in Florida, right? Uh, literally taking a mass that happened from destruction and how we're gonna make it better for a future of construction. And that's what comes down to it. Um, and then getting into LIDAR. They don't even get me started about LIDAR, right? Literally have, as you know, uh, New York City literally just had, uh, you know, the, unfortunately had that, that collapse that happened, right? But if we utilize the drone LIDAR technology and actually can see the interscopes into a building, right? And see exactly if the alignment is off, right? Yes, it was due for a, uh, uh, it was due for inspection um, within this year. But if we literally are more, uh, I like to be more proactive than reactive. And that's the type of society we live in. So we had these kids literally, literally just take the buildings we have in, in New York alone and literally did LIDAR detection on how we can prevent things of catastrophic literally that's part of the maintenance side yeah, that's part of so many variables what we do so just uh i'm just you know sorry i'm on a soapbox but this is what i love and right? i like to teach same time i like to explore and give kids these opportunities that they've never even heard of so a lot going on it's a lot going on all right um but i'm gonna leave it there because I'm, I'm out of time looks like but if you have any questions right anything you want to talk about drone cadets tony reed at uh drone so many different variables that we're, we're working with, so many different areas of uh, research we're in with drones when it comes to it, the establishment of it, but everything's hand in hand. So if you're in the construction industry, yes, you want a drone. A drone wise, you want to see exactly, all right, is the surveying points, is the building, is it literally, is it foot, is it, is it off by a foot, a couple of centimeters, you want to be able to utilize it. So I, I try to get the kids that the drones are not just an end all be all.
saw. Take the skills you have as a tool and you can utilize it along your work for it within the work site. And that's what we're pitching. It's not the end all be all. All right. You just can't buy a drone from Best Buy and say, hey, I'm a drone pilot. Well, can you survey? Um, no, but you have the skill. So it's building them up, getting ready for that workforce. All right. I rest and uh, I hope to talk to you all very soon. Thank you for your time. All right. Thanks. Thanks, uh, Tony. That was very, very informative. And uh, this has informed me personally that you, the, the, the ability to operate drones has a, a wide variety of applications. Tony, I did want to know, uh, do you have any recommendations for, let's say, a high school student that may be interested in drones? Is there like a, a, a recommendation of a good entry level job title or a particular sector that you would recommend if they just wanted to get their feet wet? Do you have any okay. recommendations for that? So um, what we're doing with our 20 interns from Grand Associates, um, everyone starts as a visual observer, right? That's the first initial. Every company would tell you, start off as a visual observer. And that what that interns is that, you're keeping up, one, you're doing safety checks of the drone, kind of like a co-pilot, right? Um, safety checks of the drone, making sure the drone itself is uh, still where it's supposed to be. It's, it's a lot of guides that we put them through, but it's visual observer is the first entry, making sure the pilot is literally utilizing that drone the way it's supposed to be. So, you know, in case someone comes up, says, is that a drone? You're over there like, sir, ma'am, uh, we have an operation going on. Um, visual observers is keep the eyes on the drone at all times. That's how you learn, that's how I learned. Um, I wouldn't want anyone else to go through it, but a uh, visual observer would be the best way of getting these kids doing it. And then slowly we make them to full pilot, but visual observing, observing everything from safety checks, training from the operations itself, even from the back end stuff, you know? So um, those are the things that we literally do so they can be ready to rock and roll. And then it's each one teach one type role. So um, that's uh, hopefully that answered your question. But okay, that yep, yep, that's, that's very helpful. And uh, is there, a minimum age requirement in order to be a drone pilot? Is there a minimum or maximum age? So I'm um, like, like, all right, so 16 is when you take the exam. So um, I like to build them up from the middle school, junior high, all the way up from there. So they already have ready to rock. So by the time you come to me or when you're in my zone, all right, it's time to, you know, the build, New York City buildings wants you to inspect this building. Um, I could put them right in the driver's seat because that's the key. That's how you keep the engagement, you know? And plus these kids are so, they're so, you know, so into it. You want to make sure we keep that engagement going so there's no time for adults. So you did all the boring stuff, right? We had to get through the testing. You passed. Welcome to my life. And let's get to work. So that's the way I, that's the way it is. It could be tedious. Trust me, you know, you might have some neck issues from looking up all day, but hey, you're getting paid. You're in the field. So let's do it. Yeah. Okay, terrific. Uh, Jessica, did that answer your questions? I don't know if you had any more questions. Okay, so Jessica is giving you a round of applause and uh, Brooklyn Tech is, is giving you a shout out, Tony, as well. Uh, some of the folks are asking, can you put your email address in the chat box so that they can reach out to you, please? Most certainly. Most certainly. All right. Thank you, Thank you all. All right. Any, any other questions, comments for Tony before we move on? All right. All right, so next we have with us one of our partners from NYIT. We have Dr. Shun Yu. He's currently the Associate Dean for Academic Affairs at the College of Engineering and Computing Sciences at NYIT. He's also professor and chair of mechanical engineering. He received his PhD in mechanical engineering from the University of Minnesota Twin Cities in 2006. He then joined the Department of Mechanical and Industrial Engineering at the University of Minnesota Dula, where he worked as an assistant professor from 2006 to 2010, an associate professor from 2010 to 2011. He was an associate professor at the University of North Texas from 2011 to 2015 before joining New York Tech. Dr. Yu's primary research areas include nanotechnology-based smart materials and smart structures, sensors, actuators, and controls. As the principal investigator, he has received external research funding from National Institutes of Health, National Science Foundation, the Federal Highway Administration, the Federal Aviation Administration, and other agencies. 
He is a fellow of the American Society of Mechanical Engineers. Recently, Dr. Yu led the effort to start a new BS construction engineering program at New York Tech, and that's why we have him with us today. So take it away, Dr. Yu. Thank you so much, Mr. Ed. Uh, really appreciate. Uh, can you guys see my shared screen? Yes. All right. All right. So I will try to keep it short, but you know, I, I cannot say how much thanks to you. You know, you, you put the, everyone together, you know, everyone really appreciate. So uh, we have a new program called uh, Construction Engineering. You know, New York Tech, we have all kinds of engineering program, mechanical, electrical, architecture, everything. But uh, recently we have a new program so, Kind of like the combination of the traditional civil engineering with the construction management. So we take the structure part of the civil engineering, but they add some construction management courses. So kind of make a little bit unique program because I thought like um, there could be a lot of jobs in our New York metro area. Um, so. It's actually pretty unique because in the, I mean, north of, from New York to the north, I think we are the only one program called construction engineering. Uh, because you, normally you were here like a civil engineering, construction management. Uh, even New York Tech has another program called architecture with a concentration of uh, uh, construction management. So this program, is, Put the sign tight to you know make you guys you know not be confused <laughs> so it's an engineering program so the student will potentially will lead into the PE license pretty fast after the program right so it's more focused than the civil engineering because we right now mostly focus on the construction part the structures uh we take away the transportation environmental those courses but then we add some courses from the construction management. Uh, so uh, hopefully uh, the student finish this program will be really much ready for the construction industry than like a civil engineering program or construction management program. Uh, so they could be, you know, working in all kinds of fields related to construction, from the design side to the, uh, you know, the field engineering to the engineering, uh, structure engineering and the, to the scheduling, the project management, and they will be all ready. Um, again, we thought this would be very reliable job market out of there because we always need the new buildings. We always have a new constructions. So that's uh, our purpose. So I hope you know the group who have the student will tell the future student they see that you know there's jobs over there. <laughs> All right. Um, so the curriculum, as we just briefly mentioned, it's an engineering program. So we have all the math, physics. Um, then we think about from the graphics. Um, to engineering mechanics, uh, learn the materials like steels, concrete, and then they do structure analysis and a design. And then they also know the job pack, other food, the hydraulic. And the, so those would be from the engineering side. And then they also learn from the construction management side, from like the building contract. Uh, construction management, cost estimation, and so on. So you, and at the end, they will have a, a capstone design project. Um, we also will offer a co-op option. Basically, the student will take a six months off to work in the company. So if any of you guys want to have, you know, some student working for you for six months, you will have a very good, amount of time to see how good a student will be. You know, you want to offer that student future full-time position or not, you will be a lot more comfortable, right? Uh, so that's a very 
uh, attractive for some students too. So it's much longer than the traditional internship and much more intensive because during that six months, the student will only do the work. They will not take a course. Um, New York Tech is a very small program. I mean, compared to those giant uh, colleges. So all the students are in like a really small class, mostly about between 10 to 30. Uh, so average will be about 20. We never have a class over 30 students. Uh, so which is a very uh, fun and very much interaction with the professors. Um, the student, in addition to the curriculum, they can do like extra curriculum thing. Like we have a, what we call the ETAC in the apprenticeship and technology innovation center. The student can do whatever they want. We provide the support, provide the mentors, and they're all free. Or they can do the engineering club. They can do undergraduate research. So like a, uh, example, like uh, NISB, we had before the pandemic, we were very good on the competitions. And now they just restart recently after the pandemic. Um, do then do undergraduate research with the professor. We have like an annual uh, kind of a project, a project and student apply with supply the money to then to do the project. And then at the end, they give a group a presentation post uh, to everyone would be fun. And the student we do some like, you know, class project. You can see here, they use papers to build a bridges. And uh, I was surprised on the left, you can see it, it can sustain the one big uh, male student without craft. <laughs> uh, and the attack we mentioned, we have all the facility, energy, you know, programming, robotic, everything. Uh, over there, it's all free to the student. We have a full-time staff there. We have a graduate student support over there. So students are welcome to join either on their project or they have their own idea, they can do it too. Uh, so for example, one for example, they build a robot and the student can um, actually remotely control even from our home. Uh, it's a fun for the students. Um, we have uh, some really successful alumni. If, uh, for example, H2M Architecture Engineer, it's the biggest uh, architecture and engineer from on Long Island. I think probably the biggest one I will see. Um, and their CEO is our alumni. Actually, was from mechanic engineering. I was uh, surprised is uh, the how short of the workforce in the construction field because a lot of our mechanic engineers students graduate, they actually later on work on the construction forms. <laughs> that was a surprise. That's why drive us to create a program specifically for construction industry. Um, so I leave my name and uh, my contact information here. Uh, you can ask any question now, or if you find it, we can work it together, either like, uh, you know, promote it to your student, or you want to hire our student for your companies, you know, we can work either way. You know, we get a student, we graduate them, they will place in the company. That's uh, the whole system works. <laughs> All right, uh, thank you. Any questions now? Thank you, Dr. Yu. Do we have any questions, comments from the audience? Dr. Yu, are there any opportunities for some of our classes to potentially visit the school? Is, is, that, is that something that's feasible? Yes, definitely. We, we, we do. Uh, we have some students, uh, colleges, uh, not college, high school students, community college students come here visit our lab, but that's very common. So if anyone interested in the, uh, you know, like a tour, uh, please let me know, you know, shoot me an email, then we can work uh, the scheduling and the so on from there. 
All right. Terrific. All right. Thank you so much, Dr. Yu. All right. So when Thank you get a chance, you. when you get a chance, just put in uh, your name and contact info in the chat box for all of us. Yes, definitely. All right. All right. Thank you. Uh, stop the sharing. All right. All right. Next on our agenda, we have Jun Yang. She is the assistant professor at New York City College of Technology and is the founding principal of Habitat Workshop an award-winning architecture and urban design practice based in Brooklyn. She is AIA, LEAD AP, BDC, CPHC, and a whole bunch of other acronyms. So she's coming to us very well credentialed. Recent awards and honors for the practice include German Design Award, ANS of Design, New York City Design Awards, Forge Prize finalists, Interior Design, Best in Design, and Women in Design. Professor Yang is a fellow at the Urban Design Forum and completed residencies at the Institute for Public Architecture and Art AMI Architecture. As the Stewartson Keith LeBron Grant and SOM Prize recipient, her research explores comparative studies on urban infrastructure and housing models across continents. She holds a BA in architecture from Yale University and a master's in architecture from Columbia University, GSA WP. She is an active collaborator with design advocates and has served on the publications committee at the Center for Architecture. So when you get a chance, June, please feel free to unmute and share with us the resources that some of our schools and partners can take advantage of. Thank you. Um, it seems like um, host has disabled screen sharing. If you can just let me do that. Yep, you should be able to now. Great, excellent. Thank you, everyone. Um, good afternoon. Um, um, again, my name is um, Jun Yang. I'm the Assistant Professor of Architectural Technology at City Tech, um, part of the CUNY system. Um, today, um, I'm here to talk you through uh, the summer program that we have, um, it's called College Now. Um, it's um, Summer Architecture and Urban Design Immersion Program. And we're framing it as a, a part of the very beginning of um, the process that students will go through in terms of getting them introduced to the profession. I always like to start with this quote because um, we all know the architecture and engineering industry has a bit of ways to go in terms of um, reaching the diversity and making sure that the opportunities are available to um, many different groups. Um, and I want to emphasize that um, in city tech, um, we have students coming from over 148 countries. Um, and we're an inner city minority serving institution. Um, we believe that City Tech is uniquely positioned to um, be a leader in addressing some of these um, um, increasing the diversity effort in the professional community. And we have multiple ways um, um, and pathways into the profession for students um, who may not be always part of that um, um, conversation um, in the prior education models. Sorry, there we go. Um, so there are really three um, different ways that we think of um, pathways into architecture at City Tech. Um, there is the, the teaching the profession. We um, have a new um, Bachelor of Architecture program and we have mentorship and internship programs that are um, tied to um, the students who are already in the program that gives them access to, to the profession. Today, I wanna to specifically focus on how we're introducing the profession to students um, through the um, summer program. So I wanna talk a little bit about College Now. It's a um, CUNY um, funded program and City Tech has its own office. And the program is open to um, New York City um, DOE high school sophomores and juniors with anyone 80% or more um, in GPA. And it's a completely free program. They don't have to pay a penny, all supplies are um, um, provided. And they get two college credits towards ARC um, 1101, which is Introduction to Architecture. So they're basically getting a head start on the program that all um, students enrolling in City Tech's program will have to take. 
I want to go over some of the examples from last summer's program. It was a six-week program, and as you can see on the left, each week had a, a very specific thematic ideas. Um, and there are certain um, things that we wanted to make sure that the students were proficient and, and learning the skill set to move forward um, in their studies and entering into the profession. The first set is really thinking about the toolkits and expanding on how we approach architecture. We wanted to make sure that students were understanding how constructing narrative is really important. So that means that, you know, what, what's available to them? Can you use your camera, really map your um, commute back and forth and how does it become more accessible to you? And also thinking about um, documenting the observations. They start with something very small, a small object like a fruit, but really learning the idea of the plans and sections um, that are rather complicated, but really um, understanding it through a smaller object that's a starting point. And also thinking about the community and the larger aspect of, of the architecture and urbanism. So students were um, encouraged to take a look at their own neighborhoods and mapping their neighborhood um, through a different lens. Like what are the different types of buildings? What are your favorite places and why? And why is it important to you? And really thinking about what are the existing assets? What are the constraints? And how can you find opportunities in your own neighborhoods? Also thinking about how do we begin to make forms? Um, I think we can all say at some point in our students' prior um, decades in life, they all played with Legos. Architecture is not any different from um, constructing forms out of Legos. So how do we make these things um, accessible entry point for many students who may not be as um, fluent in other ways of the traditional architecture entry program? Also thinking about the spaces, how do we begin to measure spaces? How do we understand different scales? And also beginning to, of course, how do we draw the space? How do we draft the space? The other main portion of the program was really thinking about um, city as a laboratory. We're very fortunate to be in New York City and every place that we go to and every place that we pass by is a, a place of lesson. Um, so we had a series of uh, field trips, one every week, essentially, and we try to frame it as part of the history, part of forgotten history. So this is an example of that trip. Um, we went to Seneca Village in Central Park, which is completely forgotten, um, but now students are able to understand what was once there, what was the community building like, and what does it mean today? Um, and students are mapping their own ideas and taking pictures and documenting their observations. And also going to um, African Burial Ground Memorial um, and, and using that as a way to think about how does the space unfold over, over the experience and um, how do we begin to draft those um, elements, architectural elements. So these are all student examples from last summer. And um, another way of thinking about it is how does the neighborhood change over time? So this is the Lower East Side. Um, and you know, it used to, it just went through so many different changes and um, went to Tenement Museum, but it's also at the cusp of um, a huge development. So how do we understand things that are changing around us? And um, using that as an exercise to go back to some of the earlier learned lessons of thinking about neighborhoods, what are the assets, opportunities, and constraints, um, and, and uh, making those connections. And also rethinking urban in infrastructures. This is an example of, uh, of one of those, um, Highline. And the students were um, taking um, the experience and thinking about sketching and what does it mean to think about the elevated railway that's being reused as a park and what's happening around it currently. What might be unique about this program is that it's not just about learning in classrooms and taking field trips. We actually had a very specific participatory design program um, that was community-led workshop. Um, we partnered with a, a community group in North uh, West Bronx and um, for a whole day of a workshop participating in their ongoing program of thinking about how do we think about benches? How do we think about gardens? How do we think about the fences that are surrounding it? and how do those become um, the seeds of architectural intervention. Um, and we also had them invited back to our classroom and had a follow-up conversation. 
Um, and in the process of it, it also gives them this incredible access. Um, most of the TAs for the summer program are actually industry professionals. Uh, it was really a collaboration with Design Advocates, um, a nonprofit organization. And these are the members who are actually um, working in architecture profession um, and, and, and participating in our summer program as TAs and volunteers. We also think about the interdisciplinary pedagogy quite, uh, quite a bit. So we collaborate with African-American studies um, and um, communication design um, programs to so really think about where, where does the intersection um, happen. And also thinking about architecture as an expanded profession. It's not just one way of being an architect, but for example, here, um, an urban designer um, who was trained as an architect um, now working for NYCHA. So how do we begin to bring these lessons that we learn in classroom out into the field and out into our own communities and make them feel more empowered? And at the end, um, it, the collaborative synthesis, um, students work in groups um, of two to three to present their final presentations um, in the auditorium. And they had to make a, a video, but they were essentially um, asked to choose a, a site from one of the field trips and think about um, public scale intervention of how to make something better and what are some of the things that are lacking, how they're addressing it. So th this is an example of synthesizing the idea of mapping the, the neighborhoods um, and, and thinking about how to design um, their public intervention and documenting it. So for this summer, um, we're um, shrinking um, the duration a little bit. So um, it used to be six weeks, but now it's four weeks. Um, this is all on the website, um, on the College Now website. Um, so it starts on July 10th. Um, there's an orientation on July 6th, and it runs from essentially 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. Monday through Wednesday, and then Thursday we reserve it as a field trip day um, for the morning time. Um, week two, three, and week four with the final presentation on August 3rd. Um, so if you have any further questions and need more information, um, I encourage all of you to visit the College Now um, website, which is um, indicated on the left side, um, and I'm here to answer any questions as well. Thank you, everyone. Oh, great. This is great info, June. Let me ask, does a student have to already be enrolled in a CTE architecture program to be eligible? Or are you all. accepting? Okay. Yeah, so any any high school students, it could just be, oh, I heard architecture is cool, but I don't know what it is, and I want to get to know what it is. Um, so that could be a starting point, or it could be a student who's very certain about, I want to study architecture and and, and get a head start on it. And uh, are they eligible to receive college credits if they enroll in this program? Yes. So um, this is essentially a rebranded program for summer for introduction to architecture, which is required course for all students at City Tech. Okay, terrific. All right. So we do uh, about half of the folks on the call are representing okay. our architecture school. So uh, this is great information to have. Um, if anybody has any questions or concerns, please feel right. free to reach Good. out. Uh, right. Rahan, Rahan do you have question. a question? Yes, yes right. go is ahead. Is this in addition to, yes, is this in addition to the um, the college credits um, based on our articulation agreement um, also? Yes. So <laughs> if they do this program, they get that two credit, and if they are part, if the, if the school is part of the articulation, another two credit? Um, I believe, right. I think I would say, um, please visit the College Now office and see what, what, what their um, answer would be. I'll just put it back to that slide here. So I would reach out to College Now at citytech.cuny.edu. That, that's a good question, Rohan. I'm going to make a note of that because I do want to find out that info as well. All right, I'll, I'll definitely look into that uh, with you, Rohan, and get back to you. Uh, any Thanks, other questions? Dad. Yeah, no problem. Any other questions? All right, all right, thank you, June. Thank you. All right, everyone, we are running with good time here. Um, so all of our presenters who were formerly on the agenda had a chance to uh, share on their organization, their resources. 
what I typically do after that section is that I, I have an open mic section. Are there anyone, uh, this is your opportunity. If you have any other upcoming events, questions, concerns you wanna bring up. I do have Stephen Cohen. I did see him earlier. Yes, here is Stephen Cohen. I do have him on the line with us. Uh, we got into uh, contact with each other a few days ago because uh, there's this monumental skill trades activity coming up in Brooklyn. And Steve, I wanna um, give you the floor so that you have some time to share with our audience about your upcoming event. Steve had to pop off, um, oh, okay. I'll pop off the call for a moment, but hi everyone, I'm Courtney. I'm an account executive with the Brooklyn Cyclones. Um, I'll go ahead and share my screen with everybody. Yes, hold on, uh, Courtney. I just have to make sure you're a host. Perfect. Um, Shay, are you able to make Courtney a host? Or is that only me? Okay, well, while that's- Yeah, go ahead. Will we figure that out? I can go ahead and talk about the night. Um, it's gonna be on Thursday, May 25th at my Maimonides Park out in Coney Island. Um, the vision for the night was we heard about the shortage of labor and trades um, that are needed. Young people are needed to go into these apprenticeships. So we wanted to create a night celebrating those trades and introducing students in our local area to those trades and partnering them with those companies and schools and creating those partnerships all around, building up the community from the ground up, um, literally and figuratively. So the vision for the night is on our concourse where the ballpark is, having organizations, unions, schools, table, show what they have going on, what they have to offer, what each trade does. We're partnering with the Department of Labor for New York. We are partnering with the Manufacturers Alliance, MACNI, and then we are also partnering with the Brooklyn Chamber of Commerce to make this night happen. Um, the Department of Labor is going to bring in cool virtual reality headsets to showcase the trades um, and how to use these um, big machines uh, in, everyday life but in a safe environment in our ballpark um my vision for the night is having each student have a card to where they have to visit so many tables in order to um get a prize at the end making more visibility for them and for the tables um in order to be a part of this um am i able to share my screen now yeah yes you can so Beautiful. my mouse my double a battery stopped working and i had to find two more to word. That's why I couldn't share Happens. the screen with you. All right. We've all been there. <laughs> all right. So we are looking for um, folks to help support these students by donating tickets and being a partner. Um, we're not asking for any specific donation. It's just whatever, um, whatever you can give if you're willing to partner with us. And then also table. I want to showcase as many trades, as many STEM activities as possible to inspire the youth and then get them into these big, big careers. Um, so it's going to, again, it's going to be on May 25th at 7 PM. Um, I'm going to leave this up for just a moment at the bottom. It does have Steve's direct contact. And then in the chat, I can also put my direct email and phone number for my desk as well. Um, but if you have any questions, my name is Courtney account executive, and then I'll go ahead and type in my, um, my contact information in the chat now, but thank you for your time. Yeah. And I'll just, sorry, guys, I had to take a quick phone call. That wasn't so quick, but, um, we have other the joint industry boards on is involved now. We have uh, Shawmut um, is, is also helping out. We've got three or four other companies joining in. Kingsborough Community College will be here. Um, so we want we want to make this a great night for for both the organizations to talk to the students and the students to um, basically get a night night out of, of of school and get a little bit more information. Um, we um, hopefully we'll have our, our goal is to. Um, have three to 5,000 students receive tickets and, and confirm that they're coming and, and attend the game. All right. All right, great. So Courtney, and um, you and I will coordinate the registration form and I'll be sure to distribute that to everybody on the call as well as our various CTE schools citywide. And uh, I, I'm looking forward to a, a pretty good turnout. Thank you. All right. All right, anyone has any questions about the event? Brooklyn Cyclone Skill Trades event. Any questions? All right. So look out for an email from us about that. Uh, next, Ismail Ocasio, are you there? Ismail, feel free to unmute. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Can you all hear me? Yep, we hear you. 
All right, perfect. Um, I could just uh, I, I could just talk about it, but I can also show some things on my computer. You want me to share the screen? Yep. Yep. Go ahead. All right. Let's take a look here. Let's just let's do the whole screen. All right. So. Good afternoon, everyone. This is Ismail Ocasio. And uh, for some of you, this is actually a, a little bit of a reunion. I, I know some of the schools and uh, some of the partners here in the meeting, and it, it's really good to either see your face or see your name um, in the in the meeting tabs. Um, so just to talk a little bit about where I am now and uh, one of the potential opportunity for our graduates. So right now we're working with an organization called uh, rebuilding together in New York City. It's actually a national organization. They come from a lot of disaster relief work. They've, you know, it's a very grassroots uh, organization. They've been helping people get their homes uh, rebuilt and, and repaired across the country. I believe it's over 120 different affiliates across the country of people and, and businesses and nonprofits and, um, and volunteers coming together to, to help revitalize and, and uh, re repair people's homes. New York City is a bit more uh, developed in terms of our chapter. Not only do we have the home repair and volunteer events, but we have a re really robust workforce program. And so since 2017, 2018, we've been a direct entry provider. So we actually are um, one of the few direct entry providers that help um, any graduates or you know people who come through our program to get into union apprenticeships. And so I'm gonna share with you a little bit about you know some of our numbers in terms of how many people we're affecting, but you know, we've definitely been around, uh, you know, not as long as some of the other ones, but we've had a tremendous impact in the time that we have been here uh, in New York City with our chapter. Um, primarily it's a home repair, which is critical home repair. So veterans, um, elderly and low income housing. Um, it's not um, it's not renovations for beautification, but it's more so along, you know, uh, windows, roofs, uh, ADA accessibility, and other critical home repairs that uh, people need. We do have uh, we have contractors out doing this work almost every single day of the week. We have a backlog of uh, of projects, um, you know, that are looking to go out. We're ramping up our individual workforce and uh, and contractor pool to do more of it. And we have our workforce program. So right now I'm the director of the careers and construction workforce program. And um, we give our students, you know, quite a lot. So as you can see, we have our, we have uh, the pre-apprenticeship training, which is, it's, just, it's a variety of different components. It's based off of the Home Builders Institute um, core pre-apprenticeship training by the National Association for Home Builders, but we add in our union uh, history of the unions and also, you know, the different careers in construction, a little bit of career exploration and resume building and interviewing skills and, you know, culture and hierarchy and all the things that you would need to, you know, perform well on a job site, but we give a lot of safety training, OSHA 30, site safety, DOB, DOT flagger, um, we're going to give this time, we're going to have the uh, F-60 um, for the torch operations. And then we also give the placement assistance. We've typically placed somewhere between 70 and 80% of our graduates, which is a pretty decent numbers. And we have a, you know, relationships with a variety of different unions across, and we're expanding that. We have a very strong board. And um, this is just another uh, resource. So I know that most CTE students they go through construction skills, you know, we might have 700, 800, 900 graduates and 150 of them, you know, are screened out and uh, slotted to get a position within the union um, to benefit from that direct entry status. This is an alternative for them. Um, this is another way to get direct entry into the unionized construction industry. And um, we're currently looking for applicants. So um, because I've worked so closely with the New York City public schools and the CTE schools, I can vouch for the hard work that you all are doing in preparing your students. I know that you're creating quality candidates. I know that they're mature and well-trained. Um, and so I wanted to open up this opportunity to the New York City graduates. We were gonna have a cohort that's gonna start maybe within the next couple of weeks, but 
the next cohort, you know, there will be one in the summer. So we are accepting applications and interest. Um, and these are for students who want a full-time career in construction. I mean, this is where we're placing them. We're not only placing them in unionized apprenticeships. We do have some employer relationships for high quality career sustaining positions outside of just the unionized apprenticeships, but that is the focus. So we first try to place them in unionized construction apprenticeships. And if we can't, we'll choose and select from our, um, you know, select partners that have, you know, high quality sustainable placements in uh, non-union shops. And that is pretty much it. Um, Danielle Horry, who's our outreach coordinator is also on the call. We can uh, share that contact information and uh, answer any questions you have about um, any students who might be interested, graduating students, um, because they'll obviously be 18 years old or have their high school diploma by the summer. So um, that's pretty much it. Just another opportunity for our CTG, CTE graduates. Well, Ismail, thanks for this information. And you know, we're in uh, April 20th now, graduation is around the corner. Do you guys have any particular application deadlines we need to be aware of, or do you accept <laughs> candidates on an ongoing basis? How does it work? Good question. So the applications and interests are ongoing. So they wouldn't be able to enroll in a program that is happening now in the spring, but we do a cohort, let's say every seven to eight weeks. So right around the time the summer comes around, they're gonna open up another cohort. So if they put their applications in now, we'll be able to review it, interview them and everything like that. So, you know, that they would be ready if they, you know, get selected to be, uh, to enter into the summer cohort. Does a student need to be a graduate from a CTE program to be eligible for your program? Um, technically, no, technically, no, but they must have a strong interest in a construction career. I mean, we, we need to respect our relationships and we don't want to waste anyone's time. You know, so the CTE graduates are the highest, you know, priority because they've they've gone through the gauntlet. They've, you know, their 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 teachers can vouch for them and they have at least experienced it. So they should know whether they want to do something related to it or not, um, as opposed to someone who has no experience. You know, they might just just look at the money and the benefits and say, yeah, I'll try it. And then and they'll maybe not necessarily uh, proceed through. Uh, again, it's not exclusionary. Uh, anyone who's interested in a full-time, uh, seriously interested in a full-time uh, career in construction can apply. Uh, I would hope that more of the CT graduates uh, would apply because at least they have a better understanding of what they're getting into. All right, sounds good. All right, any questions for Ismail? All right. Thanks, Ismail. It was great to reconnect with you. And for those of you that don't know, it was Ismail and myself. We actually ran these commissions together. Ismail was one of the guys that interviewed me uh, for this position back in the day when I first started at Central. And a lot of the partnerships and articulation agreements, he was the man in charge. Like a, a lot of these things would not have been possible without him. So Ismail, it's great to continue to collaborate with you just in a slightly different setting now, but it's good to see that we still have the work continuing. So thank you so much for your partnership. You're welcome. Appreciate it. Hopefully All right. we can uh, benefit from this uh, resource. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So I'll be sure to uh, email out uh, information about rebuilding together New York City to our schools. All right. So any other folks on the call, do you have any upcoming events, any questions, any concerns, any other items you need to raise? Questions? concerns, criticisms, compliments. All right, I'm gonna ask that you fill out the attendance form just so that I know that uh, you attended. And if remember these meetings, you're able to get your CTLE hours as a result of attending these meetings. If you are a public school teacher and you have a professional license and you need to accumulate CTLE hours, your attendance, your participation in these meetings, um, they count towards that. So just shoot me an email if you need a certificate uh, regarding proof of your attendance here. All right. Um, I will, yes, um, yes, go ahead. Just regarding the trainings that uh, Ishmael was talking about for students. Yes. Uh, 
trainings that has to do with things like OSHA and all other trainings, are they going to be free for our students? So, so Noel, well, the, the Rebuilding Together New York City program, it's a program for once they've already finished high school. Okay. Right. So it's, yeah. So, and, and Ismail, just to put it out there, are those, do candidates have to pay anything to get their OSHA yeah. credential and some of those other things you, you advertised earlier? Right. Um, the, the, the course is absolutely free to the ones who are accepted in the program. They don't have to pay any of the certification fees. They don't have to pay for the course and they don't have to pay for the PPE or anything involved. It's, okay. it's all funded. Thank you all very right. much. It's like right. they, it's a, an opportunity for them to start applying for job in advance in case they graduate, they will have so, so, somewhere to start from. Oh yes, ab absolutely, uh, Noel. So we, many of our um, CTE uh, students, once they graduate, once they want to get into some of these construction unions, many of them are familiar with um, uh, construction skills. Um, some others may try pathways to apprenticeship or we have Bronx International, that's a direct entry provider. So this is another additional pathway um, for students who are trying to get into the various construction unions. So it's something they're eligible for after they're graduating. Okay, thank you very okay. much, I appreciate yep. it. Yeah. Yep, you got it. Uh, welcome, Stephanie Burns, I, I just saw you pop up, it's good to see you. Uh, Baskar, <laughs> yeah. Baskar, feel free to uh, unmute. Uh, sure. Uh, my question was about the drones program, and I, I see that the email was provided uh, for Tony, and yes. in order yes. to, for, do I just send the email to, to Tony if any one of the students are interested in the program? Is that the way to register? Yeah, if you guys want to get in contact with me, um, either you can email me or go to our website. We do have a, um, an onboarding of exactly what you're looking for. Just check out the box of what you're looking for for your students, and we'll get right back to you, um, myself, my team. Uh, so, yeah, it's very easy, very, very simple. Oh, is the link also posted in the chat for the website? Sure, you know, I'll put the website in there. I apologize. I do see your email, I see the phone number. All right. I got it there, thank you. And so once I go to the website, just navigate to like- Yeah, so the application. Um, it's gonna see inquiry. So uh, you inquire, um, fill, okay. out the, fill out the form. I'll get right back to you, my friend. Um, All right, more. sounds good. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Thank you, gentlemen. Um, Stephanie, I didn't mean to cut you off. Did you have something to say? Sorry about that, Stephanie. No, that's okay. Um, Gav, I was just wanted to know from Ishmael, can that flyer be sent around via email so that we have it to post in other places so that people are aware of it? Absolutely. Yep. Um, okay. Is there a website to that flyer or anything that we can put in the chat? Yes, yeah, so Ismail, can you put your company's website into the chat box, please? Thank you. And, and, and yes, yeah, Stephanie and everyone on the call, um, after every meeting before I leave the office, I make sure that I email all attendees, all the links, all the notes, everything you need to know. So you, you will definitely get this information. Okay, thank you. All right. Uh, and Stephanie, you, you didn't have any updates about the scholarship at this time, right? So I do. I was going to okay. put it okay. in my email to okay, you, go ahead. but just to let you know, um, we, I can put it in the chat also. So now that I'm in a new, I'm in headquarters now, the business unit is actually running the scholarship program, but I'll send you a link to um, Janice Horton, who is responsible now for the Youth Force 2020 scholarship. We're just referring to it now as Youth Force Scholarship. 2020 okay. has come and passed. So it's just the Youth Force Scholarship Program at Turner Construction. So I'll put it in the chat now. All right, terrific. All right, any other questions, concerns, announcements? All right, everyone, good seeing you all. Uh, you. This is, uh, remember it's the holiday, so please don't show up to work tomorrow. Uh, for, for the What's school, for the school people, for the school people, not, not for industry. Can <laughs> I get off tomorrow too? <laughs> but for the public school people, remember it's a holiday tomorrow and um, I'll keep this Zoom uh, 
webinar open in case anybody wants to talk to me directly or if you want to network with anyone, I'll keep it open. I'll stop the recording, but I do appreciate everybody's time. And uh, these commissions are extremely enjoyable. Thanks to all of you. So I appreciate everything that you do. Thank you all. Yeah.